Hello, uh, welcome to this next uh, mostly marvellous design tutorial, but I'm going to be touching on DAS Studio as well uh, because I'm going to use the DAS Studio uh, dress template to make my um, uh, models. So I, I'm just going to add in Genesis here. And as you can see with Genesis, uh, once it eventually loads in, it's a you know, normal figure, arms and legs. And I, I want to make skirt, and to make skirt, I'm going to need um, something different. And Daz has these marvellous um, projection templates, which we can utilise to make our lives easier. So if I go to parameters here, and come to the bottom of this list underneath Genesis 9, I'll find utilities. And if I preview clothing template, uh, I have a number of utility, uh, a number of templates that are available. So we've got a bodysuit uh, loose and tight. We've got a, a dress loose and tight, and uh, there's a footwear one and there's a gloves one. So we're going to be using the tight dress template. So if I select that one and click accept, it's going to show me what it looks like. And this is very useful because once I export this, you know, I can, you know, use it to build a dress uh, or build a dress onto. I'm not going to read to apologize or anything um, without having the legs, you know, really um, separated. And also, because I'm using this template, I'm going to use this template to use to project my um, weight maps from. Um, I can see all the zones and I can model outside this template, um, which will help with the rigging. Okay, so uh, in terms of how this works, uh, if I select uh, Genesis, if I find uh, legs, they're here somewhere. Uh, so left thigh. So when I bend this, you'll see that it works very well. And that's because the the weight maps are good. You know, the weight maps have been done and set and work well with this model. So I'm going to model something that's quite close to this model, which will then, you know, accept those weight maps and hopefully mean that I don't have to adjust too much. Okay, so let me reset that. So I want to model or use this as my basis for Marvelous Designer. So if I select it down here and then File and Export, uh, I've got a whole uh, <laughs> a whole bunch of things here. Uh, I'm going to use I'm going to overwrite my G9 tight dress template. And click Save. Uh, it already exists. Yes, I'm going to overwrite it. Now I use meters um, in uh, my export, so I'm going to use a modo unit, which is one meter, and I'm going to click filter objects and selected routes. So it's only going to export this long dress template. Uh, other than that, I'll leave everything as it is and click accept. Okay. So uh, in the next one, we're going to just import this as an avatar uh, within Marvelous Designer, and then we'll go on to making the dress. So I'll talk to you then. Okay, so we're in uh, MD now, and I'll just go to File and Import, and on OBJ, a little recordy things in the way there. So File, Import. OBJ and then I select my exported object. Uh, you'll recall I exported at meters so I'm importing at meters and I want it to uh, as, as, uh, add as an avatar. I'm going to untick this because for this dress template it's not going to work. Um, for it to work it needs two legs and you know the model appears to only have one so it's going to fail. But it doesn't matter too much um, in this particular instance because uh, I'm not going to use them. So let's click OK and there we have it. So now we've got our uh, object in we can start to you know put our uh, patterns on it uh, but I just want to note these zones uh, these are quite important to me at this point in time because it tells me 
you know where the body parts are so when I'm making my dress I can use them as kind of guidelines to you know where things are going to happen um, for example you know I'm going to do quite a short dress for this one so I'm only going to work within this uh, sort of orangey color here uh, I'm not going to go any lower because it will add additional bones to the uh, and maps to our um, to our rig which we don't necessarily need um, so yes anyway um, in the next one we'll start to draw out our pattern on this and see where we go from there so I'll talk to you then okay so in this um, in this uh, video we're not going to use or draw out patterns manually we're going to use the line on avatar tool so that's up here so if you select line avatar we can draw on our avatar and then we can extract pattern pieces from it so I'm going to start somewhere up the top here I want to follow this line around here eventually so I'm going to start on there and then just draw just draw my mouse right down to somewhere about there I'm not going to go to the very bottom uh, I'm just going to give myself a little bit of space and then I'm going to go around to the back but I have to kind of go in intermediates here so I'm going to go around to the side and then around to the back and then up to the neckline and now we're going to go around the neckline so first of all I'm just going to put one there and then I'll pop one right back at the beginning and then my line will go yellow meaning it's a you know an enclosed space now we can edit these lines because you know they're not very good especially around the neck here so if we now go to edit line avatar and click off to deselect everything then select your line right click and add curve point and now I can draw this or move this curve point around to fit the kind of pattern that I want so it's right click add curve point and then just move that to trace that board that boundary I'm just going to move that up there we go I can move that up a little bit and that's pretty good that there's a little straight so I'm going to right click and add another curve point and just bring that down to a touch it's a little bit uh, snappy so sometimes you have to zoom in to get a better look so I'm trying to do this in as few uh, points as is possible there we go that one definitely needs to go up a little bit and I think that will be okay right so that's all very well but it won't actually produce me a pattern piece I need um, to divide this up a little bit and the first thing I'm going to need is something coming under the arm um, to make an armhole now I'm doing just a, a basic no uh, arm stress here so what I'm going to do is go back to line avatar I'm going to click up at that shoulder and then come down around back up and back to the beginning now this is possibly one of the more uh, tricky places in that um, yeah I've got to form a nice kind of curve here so back to edit line click to select off right click on your line add curve point and now I want to kind of direct this around a little bit there we go so similarly here right click add curve point to draw that down and I'm trying to get it so that I don't have any sort of sharp angles uh, where the points meet so add curve point let's pop that out that's pretty good so that's nice and smooth around there and this one's a little bit angular so I'm going to right click and add curve point and just straighten that up a bit I can move this original point if I want there we go that sorts that right out uh, this is a little uh, angular there 
so I'm just going to pop another curve point in and flatten that out so that it goes around there okay so that's defined my kind of arm hole and now I need to split this into pieces that are going to be able to be flat so <coughs> I want to cut down the side or I want to and I want to cut across the uh, shoulder there so it's back to line avatar I'm just going to join those two up like that now I have a tendency to double click on the end I don't know <laughs> I don't need to uh, so I'm going to stop that now okay so I would save this at this point because this is going to give you um, the basis for many dresses of this type so I'm just going to go file save as project and I'll call it uh, dress base one okay so if I were doing a kind of just standard dress I might put a line right down the side here to split the front from the back but actually I'm going to do something with panels and I want one panel around the back one panel around the front and one panel down the side so for that I'm going to add a new line so let's go to the line avatar tool and I'm going to click on this line here and then go right down to the bottom and double click no <laughs> don't double click <laughs> that's my uh, weirdness okay and on the back I'm going to do much the same now this isn't you know the final bit because I want to shape this so we go to the line uh, edit line select the line add a curve point and now I want to draw that curve point up a little bit so now I'm getting a curve over the breast and you know then it's curving down and that's quite nice I could move this point if I want so if I've drawn it too far over I can bring it back again and I could add additional curve points to shape the line as I want it now that's suffering a bit of snapping there so I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and then move it around there we go or I could curve this a little more you know to get the shape kind of design you want I've got a kind of a very stretched there shape there which is quite nice I like that and similarly on the back I'm going to right click there add a curve point and I'm just going to give it a little bit of shape and in fact I'm going to go yeah let's move that in okay so now I have some very defined areas so this area side area back and front and back of course so what we can do here is use the flatten tool to create our pattern pieces so underneath the uh, line tool up here I can go to flatten and then I simply point at the piece I want to flatten and click it needs to go blue and I find well my mouse is particularly twitchy on it there we go and click and click there we go and when you've selected all the pieces that you want you press enter and then it gives you your patterns now that looks like the back to me but I'm not entirely sure so I'm going to slip over to here and yes I'll, this is the back so I'm just going to straighten it up so this by definition must be the front I'm going to straighten that up as well and this will be the back there we go so I'm just going to arrange these so it kind of makes sense to me and then move them over to somewhere around there okay so that's getting our first part I'm just going to right click on this symmetric pattern we're sewing and pop that about there because I've kind of mirrored them and kept them close together it's more or less um, put them in the right place in the 3d view if you go too far away 
um, it will be out and you'll have to move it move it backwards again and then go to segment sewing I'm going to sew the front up and also the back up and now when I press space it should all fit and that's not too bad okay so in the next video what we're going to do is add some detail to this and then uh, perhaps adjust it a little bit and see where we go from there so I'll talk to you then okay so by default the offset to the avatar is about three millimeters which doesn't sound much but it's quite a lot of volume so what I'm going to do is double click on the avatar to select it and then in the properties I'm just going to switch this down to zero and that looks a little close maybe so let's try one there we go that's a bit better and now we can see there's a few bits of wrinkle and detail in the in the cloth which is going to make a little bit of a difference to you know our end result i'm just giving it a little sort of adjust here and there nothing too much right so let's pop a collar on this uh, because i'm a bit unsatisfied with this piece here so what i want to do is select there's two pieces around the collar and then in the properties the 2d um, line length will tell me how long it is and this is 7.49 inches I've set my preferences to inches uh, you may have millimeters in there so what I want is a rectangle at uh, 7.49 inches so if I click in there I can type 7.49 and I want quite a, a reasonably chunky collar uh, so I'm going to try two and then I might adjust that as we go so once that's done I want to sew it to the pieces so to do that I'm going to go to M to N segment sewing so this allows me to connect one end or one edge to two edges um, or you know more you know I could do two to four or, you know it just needs to be mismatched so to do that I click the bottom there that's my M edge and I click enter and then I click this edge here so the cross is at one side and then I follow that flow round to the front and then press enter again and that should uh, create the correct sewing lines and if I just rotate this round and offer it up this is where an arrangement point would be kind of handy but it's not absolutely necessary okay if you don't want your dress to be pulled around just select the front and the back right click and freeze them and now only the collar should actually move in now that turns out to be a little high so I'm going to select the edit pattern and just grab that top one press shift constrain and just move that down just a touch I don't want it too close to this edge because then I'm going to fall foul of an additional bone the head bone you know interfering with this zone okay so that's one side now what we can do is right click and symmetric pattern with sewing and then if I click that there that will be very close to it so in 3d space it's going to be very close and then all i need to do is a segment so to join up the back which is here and here now at this point i have the choice as to whether to uh, join the front up and i have a choice as to whether you know i can shape it or move it or do all sorts of things uh, i think you know for the sake of this video I'm going to join it up I think that's backwards so I'm going to undo it control Z there we go that's better okay so now we have a little high collar dress now this top is a little bit how can I put it loose so it's the right length for the actual joining to the dress but it's the wrong length for the neck 
So what we're going to do is just adjust that a little bit. So rather than trying to adjust the sizes and trying to make my life, you know, super easy, uh, what I'm going to do is first join these together. So I'm going to select one end because they're symmetric. It knows what the other end is, and then I can merge those together. And when I press space, nothing will really happen. I'm just turning two pieces into one. <coughs> Excuse me. And now with the simulation off, so I'll press space to do that. I'm going to select both top lines and turn elastic on. Now the default for elastic is 80 and that's why I turned it off because quite often it will be, it's too much and it will just suck onto there and pull things around. What I want it to do is more, be more subtle. So I'm going to put the ratio at 95% and then press space. And we should see that that tightens up a little bit. If it's enough for you, then that's fine. If not, then just, you know, reduce that and reduce that until it gets to a good, a good space for you. But I think that's okay. Now, if I want this to raise up a bit, I simply need to select this middle point here and move it up. And now it's uh, a little more straight. That's good. It's got a little kind of shape to it. If I want to curve it off, then I can use smooth curve, click, left click and drag and that will smooth that point out. It will take the symmetry out of it because it's no longer a symmetric pattern, but that's okay. There we go. Okay, so that's um, adding a collar and just making sure that the avatar is, you know, the offset is not too far away. Uh, in the next video, we're going to start to put some trims on this. So I'll talk to you then. Okay, so I want to put some trims on this and I've got two choices. I can either cut our uh, pieces to add a piece on the bottom and that would be useful uh, if I were going to, oh, sorry, uh, if I were going to have these as different materials, but I'm not, I want them as the same material. So let me just uh, unfreeze these pieces. There we go. Just press space to let it sim a little bit just going to even it up down the bottom and now I'm going to create a piece to span across here. So one thing that I can note is that I don't really need this piece, this uh, point here. Um, it's actually just causing a little kind of kink in my uh, hem. So I'm going to press the delete key to remove just that point. Actually, no, <laughs> apparently that's going to delete everything. So I'm going to right click on it and delete point and let that sim and that's straightened out nicely. Okay, so if I select these three edges, that's going to be all of one side and that is 18.416 inches. So now I want a rectangle piece of 18.416 width. So it's 18.416 and I'm going to make it a generous uh, half an inch. I'm going to cut that down later in the video, um, but I, I'm exaggerating it now so that I can put a, a little bit of extra on later, a little bit of uh, extra trim. Sorry, got my mouse mixed up there. Okay, so now we want our M to N sewing. So click on my uh, main one and then enter and then I've started at this end um, and I'm not entirely sure what end that is it's the back so I want to start on the back piece in the middle and that will be this piece and then this piece and then this piece and it's part of the reason I arranged these earlier is to have a logical way of sort of visualizing them so I press enter and that creates my uh, sewing and then right click and superimpose side and that should line it up nicely okay so now if I right click here 
and symmetric pattern with sewing. Just paste it just to the right of itself. Oops, that's right up, but never mind. Uh, and that's pretty much in place. And now I can sew it together. So first of all, uh, rather than sewing it, I'm just gonna select this end, right click and merge. And that will merge my back piece up and leave the front piece open. You could do it the other way around if you like, um, but yeah, I have reasons. <laughs> Right, and then back to segment sewing. And I'm going to sew the front up. There we go. And now I can press space, and now I've got a hem. So the reason I gave it a little bit extra is because what I want to do is split this into two. You'll notice that where I've sewn the uh, top of the hem to the dress, there is a nice normal map giving me some definition and I do not have that on the bottom so to cheat that what I'm going to do is select the bottom piece here and right click offset as internal line have uh, maybe for 0.25 inches and click OK and now I'm going to right click and cut and sew and now I've got a little normal piece there which is giving me some depth so if I select the bottom piece and just move it down I just want to create a new material here just going to click add in the fabric panel and then under opacity I'm going to take it down to zero and this piece or this fabric which is my trans fabric there we go. I've select that piece and apply with this button. And now I can't see it. And now I've got a dress with a normal based thickness, which is good. Now what I am going to do is because I never ever want to export this is just move that over there just to keep it out of the way. Okay, so that's the basics of popping on a trim. And I'm going to do a similar job uh, up on the collar so the collar is quite high and that's okay uh, but I want a little normal edge on it so I can select these and right click offset the internal line 0.25 is fine click OK right click cut and sew and then I'll move that up and apply the trans material to it and then I'll move that down here out of the way. And now I have a nice little normal on that edge to indicate some thickness. Okay, so the last one is the uh, the armhole. And for that, we're gonna do a similar job. So I want to select all the pieces that make up the arm, or the armhole, is that the right word? Sleeve hole, armhole, one or the other. Uh, that's 24.173 inches this time I'm going to do it vertically uh, so let me make it 0 0.5 and what did I say 24.13 fortunately it's still visible over here 24.173 there we go I've got this material selected so it's automatically applied so I just need to apply the proper material to it first whoops not like that select it first and then apply the original fabric okay so I need to know uh, where everything is here and then make a decision as to how it's going to work so I'm going to start at the top here and that is the top front and I want that to be starting here so that's there okay so with my M to N sewing I'm going to click at the top and then at the top of my armhole and then at the top of the next line and the next bottom of the next bottom of the next bottom of the next and then I'm going to press escape because I realize I didn't press enter so top of this line press enter and then just go round keeping the, the 
across on the same at the same end at each one whoops and then press enter and that should line them up nicely then right click on the pattern piece in the 3d view right click and superimpose uh, superimpose side there I did uh, it actually seems to have flipped it around which is something that often happens but it's not something I'm going to be too worried about uh, I think actually if I did it on the other side it would be more sensible so let me delete all those seams so you learn something new every day even me well especially me I'm always learning <laughs> okay so let's try it from this side so m to end sewing try it this side and i'm going to press enter and then i'm going to select each of my open to open edges there and press enter and then right click superimpose side and that's done it right but i'm flipped now so i'm just going to right click and flip that normal there we go Okay, so when I press space, we get that going, uh, except our outer piece is all a little bit loose. So we're going to use elastic again, which is, let's find out, it's, yeah, it's this piece. And I'll turn the sim off with space, turn elastic on, and again I'm going to use a higher number, 95% press space. And there we go, that tied up and... Uh, flatten nicely so it's just whoops do the top to the bottom so there to there and there we go and now I'm going to split this so uh, offset is internal line 0.25 keep it consistent with all the other trims I've done and right click and cut and sew oops this piece is the piece I want visible so this piece I'm going to apply the other invisible material to and then select all right click and uh, where are we symmetric pattern with sewing now if I put this here this time it is going to be very close to itself it's not going to mirror the pattern so what I need to do is kind of estimate how wide everything is and oh I was so close look see when you're mirroring pieces which are kind of straight down the middle you just put them very close to each other this isn't very close to the middle so I have to estimate how far this is but anyway got it not too far I'm just going to move it back press space and there we go so all that's left now is to move these out of the way because I do not want them. I don't want to export them. Okay, so there we go. That's uh, some trims. Um, what will we do next? Well, I think what we'll do next is uh, because this is a panel dress, I'm going to make the panels out of different kinds of materials. So I might uh, just to you know switch out some materials and you know see what it, what happens. Uh, I say materials, I don't really mean that, I mean fabrics. <laughs> okay, so I shall talk to you in a few moments. Okay, so I want to have different uh, fabrics for the front uh, and the sides. Well, the front, back and the sides, actually. So first of all I need to make a copy of this and uh, so that I can have a separate material type so um, if I was clever I'd label this and call it sides and this one front just so I can keep track of what I'm doing okay so for the sides um, and the trims for that matter I'm going to want a stiffer material so in my fabrics I'm going to go down to the trims and uh, where are they they're down here and this one is going to be the most extreme I'm going to get no wrinkles out of this um, so I could drag and drop that onto 
uh, the sides there we go now nothing is currently assigned to the sides so what I can do is select my side pieces and then I want to select my trim pieces which is going to be a little bit fiddly there we go and then I can use the apply button here to add that in and as I did that you should have seen that that changed shape because this is now a much stiffer material and is going to behave you know differently to the default loose material so I could also change this front material into something a little bit more fabricy, a little bit more I don't know uh, loose I guess so this is quite a loose one and this is going to be a little bit of trial and error frankly especially for me uh, so I'm going to drag and drop that onto there and actually not much is going on which is disappointing so let's try one of the other ones so I've had uh, some success with that one in the past there we go that loosened up a little bit that's nice and now we can start to see kind of the pattern in the dress now you know I've got these uh, panels here I've got the panels on the side everything shaping nicely uh, I've got my trims and uh, we have a neck piece because we've added our little trim pieces I'm going to get a normal map out of this which is going to be very useful indeed so I'm not going to texture this in here I'm actually going to texture it in um, substance painter uh, so let's yeah in the next video what we're going to do is arrange this on the uh, UV uh, so that I could get a, a, some nice maps out of it okay so I will talk to you then okay if you're going to texture this completely outside um, marvelous designer um, and you don't want the normal map then you don't really have to do this you can arrange your UVs anywhere you like uh, but I like to use the normal map so I'm going to go to the UV editor there and now I've got all of my pieces now with nothing selected I'm going to right click and reset to 2d arrangement and that's going to give me my uh, different pieces so my side pieces Is that that collar doesn't look oh perhaps it is yes <laughs> sorry my brain is, is not currently working uh, so my side and front pieces sorry my front and back pieces I'm going to select and just right click and fit to zero one and now I'm going to rearrange these to something fit a little more sensibly so I'm going to move these closer together I'm probably not going to get much better than that and right click and fit zero one and okay and then with those pieces selected I'm just going to use my right arrow on the keyboard to put them into the next uh, UDIM tile so similarly I want to do the same for all of my pieces on the trims and um, side panels so it's right click it's zero one and now I've got some decisions to make about how to arrange this so what I'm going to do is rotate those 90 degrees uh, so if I hit the shift button no it's not going to do that okay I'm just going to have to estimate it there we go I was hoping it would snap it hasn't so those I'm going to arrange like that something like that and then these I'm going to arrange underneath it now this long piece is a little bit annoying because it's going to um, take up some space but let's see so if I right click that fit to zero one and then click OK uh, yeah not perfect by any stretch of the imagination so this is the limiting piece essentially so to get a better map even though I would prefer to have it horizontal like all the others if I put it vertical um, 
yeah that's not going to make any difference either so I have a choice there I could either do it in two pieces um, and get a better map or I can leave it as it is and have it as one piece uh, I think in this particular instance I'm going to leave it as one piece um, yeah but if if I leave it in one piece then uh, I get limited edges on it uh, limited seams which makes sense to me um, if I split it into two then I, I'm essentially doubling the seams so you know it's one problem or the other so let me just right click and uh, fit zero one see if I can get a little bit more out of it there we go okay so that's those two uh, but I also need these to be fitted so with them selected I'm going to right click and fit them and click OK and then immediately I'm going to use my right button just to put them into a UDIM slot because it is going to export a map for this even if I don't want it <laughs> which I don't um, so yeah okay so that's set up the uh, materials uh, I wouldn't worry about the names too much uh, I found that regardless of what I change these names to when I export it it just does what it wants um, which is a pain but never mind okay so once we've done that we can export this uh, or refine it and export it so let's pop that to the 2d pattern window there we go so if I select all these pieces uh, I'll find out what particle distance they are and they're at 20 which is a little bit rough frankly I use usually aim between somewhere between uh, 10 and 15 depending upon the garment uh, so let's go 10 just to be safe about it and we'll let that sim there we go and now I have uh, slightly more resolution to this I can double click on the model and reduce that down to zero and when I press space that should suck onto there nicely and you'll see you know where I've got this border between these two different kinds of materials uh, I'm getting a little bit of difference in in terms of look the the main material is more bulged and this very stiff material is you know very flat and straight and that gives me a nice kind of you know visual difference between the two okay so once that is done I'm going to select everything and then file export as selected that's why I often do export selected because I have these pieces that I don't want uh, let's go and create a directory for this to work in uh, da -da, dress. and save that in there and it will call it G9 whoops G9 dress there we go okay single object weld thin uh, unified coordinates of course uh, I'm not going to export the maps here I'm going to do it elsewhere uh, include hidden objects blah 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 scale of meters uh, because well I'm going to import it into DAS studio so I could change the scale to centimeters now but generally speaking I work in meters um, so when I import uh, to DAS I'll import in meters as well so I'll leave the scale as meters and then just click OK right so the next portion of this video will be texturing um, but before I do that we will go and export our maps so in the UV editor up here we have a, a button which will export our maps so I need to find a saving path uh, as projects that's G9 I know it's here somewhere ah there it is and into the dress and we'll call it G9 dress whoops not a dress I don't know what that is and save uh, I want all tiles 
uh, but I only actually want the normal map because it's the only thing that I'm particularly interested in. Uh, I'm going to do it at 4096 because I want a good size. Uh, it's going to be a PNG so it maintains the, uh, the detail and then I'll click save. And I'm going to end up um, with three maps because I have three materials. Uh, so when I open that up, let me see if I can find it. Uh, projects. Why don't I ever sort these in alpha order? That's what I want to know. G9 address. So you've got my three maps here. So that's this one. So that's my sides and uh, trim. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, this one will be, yep, that's the uh, front and back. And then this one is the one that I don't want. This is the extra little bits of invisible trims we used just to get some nice normals out. So I'll delete that now. Okay, so when we come back, we'll uh, start to work on this in Substance Painter. So I'll talk to you then.